Hello everybody, I'm Chris, I'm from Blackout Ballistics, and this is episode two of a series that we created to demonstrate the flash performance of different suppressors under the IR spectrum. Something I've noticed is a lot of the other YouTube channels that demonstrate flash performance contain various inadequacies within their test environment, such as not enough variations in barrel length, not enough variations in ammo types, or not even letting the suppressor cool down evenly between tests. However, there is a quick disclosure we would like to mention about the series you should be made aware of in this video. First, let's talk about my test environment. I'll be using three of the most common barrel lengths for 5.56 shooters. The first being an 11.5, the second being a 14.5, and, and the third being a 16 inch. For ammo, I'll be using two of the most commonly found ammo types. The first being Winchester White Box M193, and the second being Wolf 55 grain 223. It's important to know that both of these ammo types do not contain any flash suppressant additives. However, with other various powder types found in alternative ammo, they may burn cleaner and directly affect flash suppression. For our Surefire RC2 Mini, we will be using a Surefire four-prong flash hider for all three of our uppers. It's also important to disclose the weather conditions from the night this was filmed. Listed on screen are the weather statistics pulled from that night from my local NOAA atmospheric weather station. In episode four, we implement a Kestrel for more accurate weather readings. Next listed on screen is how we have the camera set up. Five yards to the left of the shooter is a Sony A7S II filming in 4K at 30 frames per second. This is paired with an Anvis Green Phosphor PVS-14. The shooter is wearing a Grec-X night vision recorder filming in 1080 at 60 frames per second paired with an Elbit PH white phosphor tube. Lastly, there is an iPhone filming in 4K at 60 frames per second placed 40 yards away from the shooter and 10 yards away from the target. This camera is the perspective of what it would look like to be shot at. This is paired with an L3 white phosphor tube. It's important to note we used a RIX RNB14 for the recording at first, and it constantly shut off as we shot towards it. And later we decided to substitute it with an L3 tube. This makes the footage inconsistent, which you will notice for the first three episodes. As a fair disclosure, the Sony A7S II filming in 30 frames per second does not exactly capture each and every flash. However, as we progress with this series, so will our camera equipment and procedures, and we will disclose what changes are made to you prior to the test in an effort to make constant improvements towards our test case. Let's see how the Surefire RC2 Mini performs. All right, guys, first off on the firing order, we're gonna start with the Surefire RC2 Mini, starting with the 11 and a half, going from a brass to steel case. All right guys, that was the 11 and a half. Now we're gonna hop over to the 14 and a half with the same suppressor, which is the RC2 Mini. We're just giving it a 10 minute cooldown period and then we're going from brass to steel case.
That was the 14 and a half inch upper. Now we're gonna hop over to the 16 inch with the same suppressor, which is the RC2 Mini after a 10 minute cool down period. Again, we're going from brass to steel case. Now, before we end the video, there's one important thing you should know. You should know that I'm an unsponsored YouTube channel, meaning everything you saw in today's video was all self-funded and nothing you saw today was sent to me for free. What that means for you as the viewer and the end user is that you get clean and unbiased information. So if you like the style of content or if you like what we're doing with this series, please comment, like, subscribe. It helps the channel a ton. Again, guys, I'm Chris from Blackout Ballistics and thank you guys so much for watching.